So I want to discuss more about the gods of the ancient Canaanites and the people of Sodom were worshipping, and shed light on why God destroys them with Israelites by the sword. Many say God is cruel, and why would a loving God evoke genocide against the people? While they were sacrificing their children to these gods, and engaging in prostitution, rape, and self-mutilation in the worship of their gods, as early as the time of Jacob. These gods' names seem strange, Baal and Ashtoreth, and Molech. These gods have other names though, and were worshipped by the Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians by other names. Baal is the god Baal Hadan, worshipped in the ancient Carthage, was child sacrifice, according to the Romans and backed up by archaeological discoveries in the 1920s. He's also known as Kronos by the Greeks, and most of us are familiar with how he eats Zeus and the other Greek gods. The worshippers are said to place their children in the hands of the bronze statue of this god. There would be a fire pit under its hands, which were slanted downward to the fire pit below. It is said the people of the Carthage blame their downfall because they didn't sacrifice their high-born, noble offspring to the god. Baal is also the god of lightning and rain, which was extremely important to ancient agricultural civilizations of Canaan and Carthage. As we all know, Zeus is also the god of thunder. Ashtoreth, also known as Ishtar, was the Greek goddess Aphrodite, Artemis, Demeter, and Hera by the Greeks. She had also morphed into the less known goddess Sibylle, worshipped by the Romans. There is also evidence that she was worshipped by the Egyptians in the form of the Sphinx, since she is associated with lions carrying her by a chariot. Her male priests would cross dress as women and mutilate themselves either by castration or by cutting themselves and bleeding out almost to the point of death. There were also temple prostitutes for the goddess Aphrodite. She is associated with the morning and evening star, which of course Lucifer, son of the morning, is as well known who is Satan. We have good evidence and written accounts by the Romans during the Jewish and Christian persecutions of this unbiased evidence. So the goddess Ishtar is the mother goddess of the earth, is associated with all nature and human ingenuity. The god Baal is associated with rain which fertilizes the earth. And of course, he is also known as Tammuz, the husband who betrays Ishtar by denying her love, and Ishtar cries over his death and makes it rain. This is mentioned in the Bible, weeping for Tammuz, and she is also known as the Queen of Heaven. The story of Ishtar is a very erotic, and she, in fact, seduces and tricks the gods into giving her power for her womanly charms. She is a fertility goddess, and we see a great evil in this symbiotic relationship between these two gods. They give you children, and Baal demands you sacrifice these children to him for rain, so that Ishtar can bring in a good crop. And sexual intercourse was practiced to bring fertility to the land. Baal is also worshipped as Beelzebub by the Philistines. Beelzebub, as we all know, is another word for Satan, the lord of the flies. Now many of us say to ourselves we are not idol worshippers, but we are. People still have abortions to ensure their prosperity and beauty. They don't want to take on the financial, physical, and other responsibilities of parenthood despite the fact they can shoulder them or pass them on to a willing couple they wish to adopt. Some spend over a thousand dollars or several hundred on watches, phones, clothes, and jewelry. Others spend thousands on games, movies, and hobbies over the course of many years. These are harmless activities and are not sinful in moderation, but if they mean more than God and Jesus, they are idols. They can also make us forget what really matters as God and family. If you don't give God and your loved ones the attention they deserve, you alienate yourself from them. These things can also make us run into thousands of dollars of debt. This money could have been spent helping the poor, needy, sick, and those that need to desperately hear the gospel. The hours spent watching Netflix, cable news, and playing video games could have been spent reading the Bible and connecting with God and loved ones on a deeper level and making an impact on the world. We could spend these thousands of wasted hours doing chores which make our houses cleaner, which prevents illness, or learning to garden, grow our own foods for ourselves, neighbors, and churches. We could be spending our time learning to play an instrument, making jewelry, or developing a meaningful, useful skill that can benefit us and others and be used to glorify God. All things are clean if we do them in moderation. I'm not telling you to stop watching movies, go to the theater, or stop doing the things you enjoy that are innocent and clean, as Paul says in Colossians chapter 2, 
verses 20-23, through 23, King James Version. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are to perish with the using, after the commandments and the doctrines of men, which means have indeed a show of wisdom in well worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. We shouldn't be consumed by the things of this world and find ourselves slaves to them just as we are slaves to our sinful nature. In Christ we are free from these things. We should be filled with a desire to read the Bible, preach the gospel, glorify God, help our neighbors, and love the people in our lives, and all we do, not for salvation, but because of our deep love for Jesus and the salvation of the cross. Quality time loving others is quality time loving God. It's the second great commandment. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 or 40, we can read this. King James Version. Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first great commandment, and the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I am Brian Cornelius, the founder of The Lion and the Lamb. Hope I have given you a better grasp of the evils of idolatry and have shown you that we must do all things in moderation for the benefit and the glory of God. And hopefully have a better understanding of the gods of the Canaanite people and why they were so evil and why God sought to destroy him with the Israelites by the sword.